that's not how it was made stop it it's like colorization it's bad but if it's out and people are paying to watch it it is your job as a critic to go and see it otherwise the whole thing is pointless all right then i take that okay very back the last thing so uh, the raids at number eight hello to gareth who's listening on the podcast yes uh, hello uh this is from louis roberts in royal tunbridge wells I was uh, lucky enough to catch an 11.30 screening of Mr. Evans' extravaganza at my local multiplex yesterday, despite rarely hitting the hay at any time after midnight. I'm glad to have taken up that time indulging in what I would class as an exploitation movie with fierce, solid action thrown in for good measure. Here, Mr. Evans displays his skills with a range of terrifically choreographed fighting sequences, complete with harsh yet exciting brutality. No doubt a treat that furiously kicks Michael Bay straight in the bottom. Uh, Michael Bay, who apparently is now hard at work in prep on Transformers 4. Looking forward to that. Mm. Uh, and you can email mayo at bbc.co.uk. Is that, is you can that, watch... Is that a quiet daddy daughter telling us? You can show. find us on Twitter all? Do you think he'd do a voice, a series of voiceovers for us? We should ask him. Do you think we should? <laughs> Just see what happens. Uh, a good day... Two, four, radio five, live. A good day to die hard is at number four. Uh, Louis. Boring. Yeah. Louis in Tunbridge Wells. A good day to die hard, or to give it its proper title, a good reason to shoot yourself. It's one of the most <laughs> soul-drainingly <laughs> mundane experiences I've had in a multiplex so far this year. Even Mary Elizabeth Winstead, the only ray of sunshine, isn't enough to save this thing from being lowest common denominator. L- lowest common denominator. Have another run at that, gone. Dumbo garbage. Up there, or rather down there, with Taken 2. Thoroughly cynical and depressing on every level. Will someone do the noble thing and send Skip Woods back to scriptwriting preschool? Yeah, I mean, and the main problem with it is... Trim- Skip Woods, Tripped, eh? tripped down... C- clipped down... De- oh, for heaven's sake. We'll move Trimmed on. down to a 12. You and I have not got our teeth in today. We need less sleep. Last week, they said every time Kermode mispronounces Miyazaki, I, I say Miyazaki. Um, they said I think that the director of I Spit on Your Grave has started making anime films, which is a very funny joke. Uh, Pompey is at number eight. Louis in Tunbridge Wells. As someone who has been a long-term flag waver for Paul W. S. Anderson, as well as one who believes him to be nothing as bad as Michael Bay or McGee, blah, blah, blah. He's not. It was refreshingly pleasant to see him making something of a return to form with Pompeii, or as I've come to call it, Mount Vesuvius Down. Any action-packed romp that adopts the light-headed silliness of Roland Emmerich's most recent outing gets fit Kit Harrington back in the saddle, literally, (laughs) and features Kiefer Sutherland impersonating Jeremy Irons from Die Hard 3, wins me over any day. A massively entertaining couple of hours. Welcome back, Paul. It doesn't know its audience. Yeah. Or maybe it does. Or maybe it does. On the other hand. Uh, taken two at five. You love it. I mean, it, yes, j- just depressing and uh, unbelievably cynical and it's taken a huge amount of money because it's depressing and unbelievably cynical. Notable mainly for the fact that it caused Rupert Murdoch to tweet saying, oh, look... All those critics said our movie was rubbish, but it's taken a bazillion dollars. Uh, Listen to the words of uh, Lewis Roberts in Tunbridge Wells. Uh, We have this. I I must hold my head in shame and make the confession. My best friend and I, a few weeks ago, paid to see Taken 2, Borderline Idiocy. That thing you can hear is Rupert Murdoch smiling. From the title alone, I wasn't expecting too much from this Besson vehicle follow-up, so needless to say, that staggeringly less was delivered. (laughs) Staggeringly less. This is, without doubt, the most hideous (laughs) accountancy spreadsheet of a movie that I've seen to date, made all the worse by the literal money shot where Neeson's character receives a cash envelope from a client before irritatingly chuckling and smiling to himself after as if to mirror the monumental and loathsome smugness of the committee that put this atrocity together with bland characters a ludicrous storyline lacklustre action overpasted cliches and pinching part of the music sa- music soundtrack from nick reffin's drive which they had no right to do at all it totally destroys any heritage the first movie had to offer yeah taken three coming soon as my best friend rather liked the film, which I really regret to inform you, I feel the need to ask the good doctor, is my friend going to Helena Hancart along with this film? Well, I mean, unfortunately, if so, then with a, with a huge other amount of people, because loads of people have gone to see it. I, again, I would say that loads of people have gone to see it and been disappointed by it. And once again, I'd say it's proof that just because a film takes a load of money doesn't mean that a load of people enjoyed it. It just means that a load of people paid to be disappointed. But, hey, maybe I'm... Maybe no, I'm not wrong. I'm right. Oh, because yeah, far be it from you. For a moment. Yes. Uh, so.